Mr. Secretary, help us get this straight. At what point during your hospital stay did you or your staff decide that the president should know about your hospitalization? As I understand it, my chief of staff uh, contacted uh, the national security advisor and advised him that I'd been hospitalized on the 4th of, Jan uh, 4th of January. At what point during your stay was the 4th of January? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. How long into your stay was that? Well, uh, as we've uh, pointed out, uh, as it's been pointed out earlier, I, uh, days, I was admitted days to the hospital after you were on the 1st of January. Right. Okay. Um, yes or no, did you tell your staff not to inform the president, anyone on your staff? I never told anyone not to inform uh, the president, the White House, or anyone else about my hospital hospitalization. Okay, so the 30-day the review summary uh, lays a lot of blame at the feet of your staff. Uh, it seems that that would appear, correct? For the breakdown in the process? You've told us that you are responsible, but the 30-day re the review seems to blame your staff. Well, the 30-day review pointed out that, uh, uh, that there were uh, some missteps, and, and, uh, but there was never any ill intent or an intent to obfuscate. So. Uh, one year ago, you told me in this hearing room you had no regrets about what happened in Afghanistan. Do you, re do you regret what happened here? I've said that uh, we didn't get this right, uh, uh, Congressman, and uh, we put measures in place to ensure that the notification process uh, is improved going forward. Mr. Secretary, we, who, who will be held the, accountable? The transfer of authority uh, was... Uh, who will happened. be held accountable for this? This, again, embar this embarrassment. Again, I take full responsibility, and we put measures in place to, uh, uh, to address uh, the, uh, the shortcomings. Are you surprised the president didn't call for your resignation? I'm surprised, but are you surprised that he didn't call for your resignation? The president has expressed, expressed full faith and confidence in me. So you're not surprised that he didn't call for your resignation. Is it typical that the president would go three days without talking to his secretary of defense? Is that typical or is that a regular posture? Do you usually go days without talking to the commander? In I mean, that can happen. It depends on if, whether or not the president's uh, on on uh, on travel. If I'm on travel, uh, th there are times when we we do go days without direct communication. So the the big issue for me here is either the president is that aloof, or you are irrelevant. Wh which one is it, Mr. Secretary? That you it's would go three, that the president would go three days without knowing that his secretary of defense is is not on the job. It's neither. Uh, the president is not aloof, and uh, and I am. Uh, I participate in uh, in all of the. Uh, uh, let, let me ask you this: well, on problem. January second, while you were in the hospital, President Biden was vacationing in the Caribbean. Your deputy, who the president didn't even know had operational control, was on a beach in Puerto Rico. What kind of message does that send to our adversaries? Uh, the key piece is that, number one, uh, the deputy has uh, the ability to, uh, uh, she has access to secure communications. She has the ability to participate in decision-making uh, processes from wherever she is. Mr. Secretary, our, 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 our adversaries should fear us, and what you've done has embarrassed us. And let, let me sum this up by this. A leading Chinese propaganda outlet said that what, hap what happened to you exposed, quote, internal chaos. A leading Russian propaganda outlet said that your disappearance, quote, effectively compromised the gentleman's time's expired. Chair now recognizes the chair. Chair now recognizes the ranking member.